All right, so we've got this basic form that's got a email field, it's got a password field, and already we can see a lot of duplication. We can see accessing the error message is going to be the same in both places. We can see setting the, uh, lab the field label, we can see setting the placeholder, the styles, all of this is the same or extremely similar. And as we build out a form, if we add a confirm password, if we add a first name, last name, if we add agree to terms, there's going to be a lot of duplication here. So something I'll do very, very early on in working with forms is kind of start abstracting things and using wrapper components uh, to really reduce the amount of typing we need to do. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So what I'm gonna do is actually copy basically everything that a single field has. So from this view that's setting some margin, and then we've got the label, the input, and the error message in there. And then I'll go ahead and create a new component. And I'll call this component uh, styled input, just so the name doesn't clash with text input. And then from this, we'll go ahead and return that component. Okay, so what all do we have here? Well, we've got this email, so I'm gonna go ahead and call this a label. We can go ahead and swap that out. Working down, we've got a placeholder, we've got some styling, we've got unchanged text, we've got formic props, we need to pass this. And then if we look in here, uh, we've got a few things that kind of designate what field we're working with. So we can see we've got email here in the handle change, handle blur, touched, and error. So what we're gonna do is actually use a prop we're gonna call formic key, and then that'll just specify which uh, property we should actually be updating. So we can go ahead and change out email, to format key in all of these places. Okay, so that's most of the way there. Um, what we can do in addition to it though, because we've got things like a placeholder now, uh, we could go ahead and do, you know, placeholder, but if we want to, you know, not everyone's going to have autofocus. We can go ahead and set the keyboard types for different ones. Um, they're not all going to be the same and they're going to be different pretty much every single time. So I don't want to add each one of those. And what we can do here is actually, I think this is called a rest operator in an object. Uh, but basically what we can do is take all of the remaining props that are passed that aren't label forming props or formic key. And then we can go ahead and forward those on to basically the child component, in this case, the text input. So what that looks like in practice is we get rid of the placeholder and the autofocus, right? And all we would have to do is Again, take the remaining stuff. So dot, 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 rest is going to then give us an object of all the remaining props that are being passed. And we want to go ahead and spread those onto the text input as props to it. That way, things like placeholder and all of that uh, can be passed to the text input. And whenever I'm doing something like this, I want to add rest as the last property. That way, if they want to override on change text for some reason, they can do that. We've got our default implementation, then we can pass a user customized implementation. And that just makes it easier for you in the future if there's any uh, unforeseen circumstances that you wanna use this component for uh, without having to really refactor the component a lot. So this should all be set up for us to actually go ahead and start using. So I'll take styled component, and then we can go down to our email. I'll go ahead and add this in here. So if we remember, there's a few fields we need to pass. We need to pass label, that's going to be email. We also need to pass formic props, that's going to be just passing on formic props. We're also going to pass on formic key, and if we look down here, that is just email lowercase. And then with that done, we can actually go ahead and pass any specific text input things for this field uh, on here. So we can pass the placeholder and the autofocus. So I'll go ahead and delete, rather I'll cut the email just in case I messed anything up. But it looks right if I go forward. Um, so we're not seeing the error message popping up. So what I'll do, I'm gonna paste that back in here just in case we need to grab anything. Go back up to our text input. Oh, okay, so what's happening here is uh, basically we're not accessing it correctly. We're looking for the format key on the touched object or the errors object. And rather than saying dot email or dot format key, what we can do is pass an array after touched or email. 
And then that's what that's going to do is allow us to look for whatever the key, the value of format key is rather than actual, you know, looking for a uh, key with the name of formic key inside of our values or our errors are touched. We're going to look for the value of format key um, on touched. So in this case, it's going to be email or it could be password, confirm password, whatever it may be. So now if we try this, well, let's actually cut out this one again. So now if I go ahead and just advance here, okay, so we're seeing our email is required field. So we can go ahead and refactor the password one as well. We'll go ahead and call this password. Formic props is going to be the same. We can again pass password. Uh, our placeholder is just going to be password. Autofocus isn't on this one, but secure text entry is. We can add that on here. We'll go ahead and cut all of this. And then if we go around, we can see we're getting all of our error messages. Everything's working correctly. If I add an email address in here, we can see everything's still working exactly the same. We've just refactored a little bit so that we can you know, reduce duplication. We can more easily refactor it. So for example, if we want to basically check if, you know, if there is an error on this field, what we'll do is actually, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. We can say, uh, if there's an error on this field, then we're going to go ahead and make the border around the input red as well. So I'm going to create a new variable called input styles. I'll go ahead and create that up here, input styles. And then basically, if this is true, if touched and there is an error, so if that field has been touched and there's an error, then we'll go ahead and say input styles dot uh, border color will be red. Let's see if this works. So now if I skip ahead, we can see we've got this on both cases. We only had to make that change once and it works for all of our inputs. It allows for a lot of consistency. It allows for reduced bugs. We only have to fix bugs in one place. Um, so that's really a refactor I would highly, highly suggest you work on because you're going to have multiple fields throughout your application uh, that allow input, refactor things so that they work nicely with your validation library, with your form library in a very consistent uh, manner.